Hey, let's go over some Spurs news and notes that you might have missed and then put in the draft spotlight, Matas Buzelis. You are Locked On Spurs, your daily San Antonio Spurs podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome back to Locked On Spurs right here on the Locked On NBA Network. I am your host, Jeff Garcia, Spurs writer for Ken's 5 San Antonio. Glad to have you back. Follow me on X at Jeff G. Ken's 5. Hey, what are we talking about today? We're going to be looking at some Spurs news and notes that you may have missed. And then bring our guest, Jack Thompson, formerly with San Antonio Sports Star. We're going to be putting in the draft spotlight. Matas Buzelis, pros, cons, fit in San Antonio, and then discuss you guys, the Locked On Spurs fans, and your comments over at the YouTube page. As always, we thank you for making Locked On Spurs your first listen every single day. Follow us wherever you get your favorite podcasts, such as on YouTube, Ken's 5 Plus app, iTunes, Spotify, the list goes on and on. But hey, there's a lot of Spurs news to catch you up, and I'm not going to get over everything because it will be here for the whole show, but there's quite a bit. And I guess the first one is via Bleaker Report. Uh, the Spurs are reportedly very keen, fond, high on guard Devin Carter out of Providence. Uh, that's according to uh, Bleacher Report. Uh, quote, sources say San Antonio Spurs are high on Devin Carter, who just completed work with the Sacramento Kings and Chicago Bulls. Now, Carter with Providence last year posted 19.7 points per game, 8.7 rebounds, 3.66, and 1.8 steals. Maybe a projected second-round pick. The Spurs do have two of them. We'll see what the Spurs do. But, like, hey, at least they're looking at guards, right? Trying to fill that void in San Antonio. Another Spurs news, uh, top draft prospect, Zachary Richache is going to work out with the Spurs. Uh, he is heading to San Antonio, uh, and then he's going to go to Atlanta or vice versa. The point is the Spurs are going to take a look at him. There have been rumblings that the Spurs may want to move up in the draft packaging for an eight. Perhaps that's their guy and their target. So, yeah, remember, Spurs have four and eight in the upcoming draft pick. Uh, there was a recent report, uh, you know, speculation, I should say, that uh, the Spurs wouldn't mind look, uh, trying to trade up to number one. Could Zachary be their target and maybe somebody else? But hey, Spurs are uh, definitely taking a look at him. They have scouted him through, during the regular season. Uh, he's told me, Zachary, that is, that he's aware that the Spurs have been uh, scouting him. So this is just par for the course. Due diligence by your San Antonio Spurs. So keep an eye on that. In other Spurs news, uh, former Austin Spurs guard uh, Sir Jabari Rice has signed with a team in the Dominican Republic, Metros de Santiago. Recall he played with the Austin Spurs and for the San Antonio Spurs last year. Uh, looks like he is taking his talents to the professional ranks out in the Dominican Republic. So congratulations to him. Hopefully he has a fruitful it, uh, well, basketball career overseas. Maybe he'll make it back to the uh, NBA. We saw this uh, recently with Kelton Johnson's brother. He was uh, Caleb. He played um, over in South America, and then he ended up finding his way back to the Austin Spurs. Maybe that'll happen for Sir Jabari Rice. And finally, in uh, Spurs news, preseason news. That's right. The Spurs and Heat will play a preseason game in Miami on October fifteenth. Uh, that has already been announced by the Heat. So. Can you believe it's already that time? Preseason schedules already? Where does the time fly? Seriously, I feel like just yesterday the Spurs wrapped up their uh, season. Uh, yeah, but there you go. If you want to make plans for a preseason action game out in Miami and you're a Spurs fan, there's your chance. All right, there was some quick Spurs news and notes. When we get back, we're going to bring our guest, Jack Thompson, for with San Antonio Sports Star. We're going to be discussing Matas Buzelis. Put him on the draft spotlight. Hot seat. Uh, does he fit in San Antonio? Should the Spurs get him? Uh, any pros, any cons to his game. We're going to be discussing that and more right here on Locked on Spurs. This show episode is brought to you by BetterHelp. If you're looking to give online therapy a try, give BetterHelp a try ASAP. Life has ups and downs, trials, tribulations, whatever it is, you need to get it off your chest. Somebody who's unbiased, and that's where BetterHelp comes in. Again, we all carry around those heavy burdens sometimes. Big or small, it's going to weigh you down. Or perhaps you're doing something right and you want to continue doing it right. That's where better help comes in. Look, don't keep them bottled up. You can start to let that affect you negatively. Don't let that happen to you. Therapy is a safe place that helps you get things off your chest and you can figure out how to work through whatever life is throwing at you or whatever's weighing you down. So if you're thinking about starting a therapy, give BetterHelp a try ASAP. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, suited to your schedule. You just fill out a brief questionnaire. You can match up with a licensed therapist. You can switch therapists at any time for no additional charge. Look, you need to learn coping skills. You need to learn how to set boundaries. 
What about positive coping skills? They got it all over at, at uh, BetterHelp. So you got to go get it right now. Get the best version of yourself. Get it off your chest. Go to BetterHelp right now. Visit BetterHelp.com slash LockedOnNBA. Get yourself 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash LockedOnNBA. A Jedi uses the Force to subscribe to Locked on Spurs. Pass on what you have learned. And look who's back for his uh, up leading up to the NBA draft weekly spot. Maybe more this week. Who knows? He is Jack Thompson, former San Antonio sports star. Follow him on X at Jack underscore Thompson 33. Jack, we're on a roll, baby. We're on a roll. Oh, yeah. We're getting all these draft prospects, spotlight shows under the belt, man. Getting the Spurs fans primed and ready. But finally, we get to your guy. This is a guy you've yeah. been really, really wanting to talk about. Matas yep. Buzelas, but before we get into him, how you been since we last spoke? I've been good, man. Can't complain. Yeah, you know, same old, same old, same daily grind. Talking about random Spurs, what ifs with my friends, crazy things <laughs> that we could do that could would never happen, but we all pray that they could. But yeah, I've been good, man. How you been? I'm doing all right, man. Just getting ready for the draft. Uh, you know, seen all the reports left and right. Two, Two weeks, weeks, man. It's, it's right around the corner. I just can't believe it's right here. But uh, we're going to get you ready for possible players the Spurs could pick within their range. Uh, and then we know everybody everybody should know. They got four and eight, so yay. But we're looking at guys that could theoretically fall within that range. And one guy that could fall is Matas Buzelas. This is a guy that Jack has just been goo goo gaga over. And this guy's like, he got to get him, got to get him if he's there available. Jack, before we get into some scouting reports, numbers, and everything, why do you think he'd be a good fit with the Spurs? I think he really, he's just a good fit for any team. He's literally the prototypical four man you want in the NBA right now. He's 6'10. He's super bouncy. He's a good shooter. He led the G League Ignite in blocks per game with over two a game. So he's a good defender on help side and guarding his man straight up. He's got a ton of length at 6'10 with an even, with a plus wingspan. And yeah, I just, I think specifically with the Spurs, he fits in extremely well because he can run uh he can be the ball handler in a pick and roll because he has a high basketball iq and he passes the ball very well for a, a three or a four you know he can guard multiple positions at 610 you can put him on basically anybody even on an island with a point guard with you know his athleticism and length he could hold his own and get a stop so yeah i think he's a he would be a fantastic addition to the spurs i think a combination of him jeremy and wimby as the front line, you know, I think that's deadly. It's a deadly, deadly yeah. concept. Yeah, that, that sounds pretty pretty wild for the Spurs to have that kind of force on the team. But you know, he's coming from G League Ignite, you know, and that's kind of been up in the air as far as results. Uh, you know, Scoot Henderson, so-so kind of came on towards later the season, but didn't really have the impact as many thought he would. Um what about that aspect of it coming from a system that really hasn't been productive as far as producing quality? I mean, maybe Scoot might be the first one, but it looks like that way. But as far as, you know, the goal of it was to produce quality NBA players that are ready made and so far has come up short. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of it is with these kids, they're used to every time they step foot on the court, you know, they're the best player. No one can match them. No one can guard them. They're going to be able to do whatever they want. And a lot of times with those same players, they move up to college, the top level guys as freshmen. It's still, you know, trends that way. They're still, you know, their focal point of the offense. They're touted NBA draft pick. They're, you know, they're they're still can get to their spots because they're playing guys, you know, relative to their age. When these guys move up into the G League, yeah. I mean, it's a whole new world. You're stepping on the court with grown men that got bills to pay and families to feed. And they don't care if you're, Matas Buzelis mm -hmm. projected lottery pick. They're coming in and they're going to attack you game in and game out. Yeah. And they're going to make it very difficult on you because one, I mean, this is their job. Two, you're a kid in a grown man's game and you're being guarded by grown men who are stronger, more physical than you, could be more athletic than you, just got a whole lot more on the line than you game in and game out. Because, you know, Matas, he's going yeah. in, I'm going to get drafted. I'm going to the league after this one year. These guys in the league, or in the G League, they're fighting for a roster spot with every second they play yeah. on the court to try and get 
taken up to, so it's it's a whole yeah. different feel in the g league so i feel like a lot of that uh with these guys that haven't really you know rounded into form coming out of the ignite i think a lot of it's confidence they just you got to get your confidence back up they've been you know rough year sure. all year getting beat up on and it takes an even more of an adjustment to come in off of that and then go to the league where again you're playing with grown men who it's their job but they're also the best in the world so it's mm, it's I think yeah. a lot of it is that that confidence building back up that learning curve, but I I mean I think Scoots this year I think we're going to be see a whole different level of Scoot Henderson and I think mm -hmm. with Matas yeah he might struggle a little bit in that first year, but you know he's got the ultimate gravitational force on his team if he was on the yep. Spurs with Wimby which will make anything easier for anyone on the court. So yeah, I absolutely. think that's really why you know G League Ignite guys haven't panned out because. They just, you know, they got beat up on for a full year and now they're coming in to get beat up on by better players while yeah. they're still becoming men in their own right. And it's just, I think a lot of it's confidence. Yeah, well, let's go to Davis to some of the numbers. He's measured at 6'10 with a 6'10 wingspan, uh, coming in about a little over 200 pounds, 209. Uh, you know, you look at some of the draft projections, they haven't go as high as 3, low as 10. So definitely in that range where the uh, Spurs could uh, select him. Now, you talk about those numbers he did. 14.3 uh, points per game, 6.9 rebounds, 2.0 assists, 2.1 blocks, and just about a steal a game. 45% shooting from the field. This is where I have an issue. 27% from the three line, though, uh, and 67% from the free throw line. Yikes. Um, again, it looks like he could be just a rim attacker because his shot seems to be not consistent. Jack, your thoughts? I think, I mean, if you've seen anything on Matos Buzelis, he's got a beautiful jump shot. I mean, it's it's picture perfect form. He can shoot the ball. And I think that, again, that comes in with the confidence. He came in to G League Ignite, and he was not the best player on the team. By all standards, it was Ron Holland was the leader of that team. He led him in yeah. points. He was the go-to guy in offense. So Matas probably for the first time, not probably for the first time in his, his entire life, he had to take a backseat role to somebody else and he had to do, yeah. you know, different things instead of being the primary scorer, which is getting himself open off of screens, setting screens, you know, being the roller in a pick and roll, just a lot of stuff that he might not have been used to. And then you, um, you throw in again, the factor of playing against the old men that are just beating up on you all day. I think a lot of that is what took a toll on his shooting is the physicality of the game. He just, you know, hadn't gotten used to it. But we saw him step into the rising stars after, you know, showing yep. that picture. And he dominated that game. He that hit he the did. game when he shot. He looked fantastic in that game. So I think, uh, I think Mata's jump shot is going to be just fine. You know, we drafted Jeremy, who... He's go. was far worse statistical than yeah than Matas is and had far worse looking form than Matas is. His form had to be completely broken down and made into something new. Matas is far, 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 far further along than Jeremy is on his jump shooting. And we saw a big plus in Jeremy's jump shooting year two. So I think Matas with the shooting is it's really not a concern for me. Uh, would a good comp be Nick Batum? You think that'd be a kind of a uh, oh yeah, I think for him. Nick, Nick Batum <clears throat> is definitely a, a good comp. I like that a lot. Yeah. Uh, you know, Gordon Hayward, I like that comp. Um, yeah. What's some other guys? Maybe like a Pascal Siakamish type player would be yeah. his highest ceiling, I think. I think Matas is definitely a guy who's got that all-star potential in his game with his size and versatility. He's got mm. all-star level play ahead of him in the NBA. Yeah, you look at some of the scouting reports here. I got a couple here. Uh, one thing that everybody notes is that he moves well on defense, that he's capable of staying mm -hmm. in front of his uh, defender, getting blocked shots as well. Interesting enough, though, is that this, he the, the, a lot of scouting reports say that he can impact the game without initiating the, the offense, uh, for example, providing the spacing, uh, you know, just facilitating and whatnot. He looks like a well-complete player. You know, you know, despite uh, you know him not being projected to go maybe one, two, or three, are you surprised he's not considered, you know, a top, top, top pick in this draft? Considering it is watered down, and a guy like him, at least on paper, 
sounds like somebody you know that could go one, two, or three. Yeah, it's definitely shocking that I've not seen him more on big boards as one, two, or three. It, I mean, one, I feel like Sar, he's got that unicorn, mm -hmm. you know, prowess to his game, something that he could become. So I feel like just with that behind his name, he's he's got to be one. But two and three, I feel like, are wide open for the taking. And yeah, you know, Richache is he's playing in he's playing pro. I'm not sure if that pro league as is, you know, what the comp level to it is compared to the G League. I would imagine it's, you know, around the same level. And he's had some good games. Uh he struggles a lot, you know, Richache defensively, he's very weak. He comes in at under 200 pounds. And offensively, he really doesn't have a good handle off the bounce. When you flip over to Matas, right. I mean, defensively, two blocks a game, a steal a game, guards, you know, could guard one through five with his length and athleticism. And then he handles the ball like a like a guard, like a shooting guard. He you can play him out of the pick and roll. He can make the right reads when doubles come his way. He'll make the right read in the pick and roll. He's just a very high IQ basketball player. And I think he has that step up over Richache. So I, I was it's hard for me to, you know, say that Richache is bona fide better than Matas. In my eyes, I'm taking Matas. Right. But I think it's kind of shocking that you, you were not seeing him in that two or three spot a lot more yeah. on big boards. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, based on, you know, what the scout report and evaluations he definitely fits in what the Spurs need and that is a stretch big uh you know he could definitely do that and you know help you mentioned that you know a trio um you know Wimby and Matas and Sohan I mean that'd be pretty cool but I like the fact he can stretch the floor you look at Vegas has the Spurs as an number one spot for Lori marketing a stretch big you know Matas seems to be in the mode of a stretch big so we know what the Spurs need is that big with Wimby that can stretch the floor. I mean, no, no, no disrespect to Zach Collins, but you know his game isn't built that way. Matas is. Uh, you know, he's he's quick laterally. You know, he can score. He can attack the rim. Uh, you, you know, we like the defense. So we're seeing from the scouting reports. There's some good comps. Nick Batum. I think there's another one. Uh, Franz Wagner. Uh, I have another. Yeah, uh, comp definitely. Franz for, Wagner, for, great uh, comp. Probably yeah, be, for, will be better defensively than Franz, too. Yeah, yeah. And uh, you, you mentioned, you know, playing behind Ron Holland probably impacted his numbers. So we'll see when he gets that shine. But we got to look at the Spurs now for number four, number eight. If they take him at four too high, they take him at eight too low, or does it really matter? Just grab him. Or do you, th you think maybe he would I mean, be there available at eight if the Spurs pass on him? I mean, it, it'd be scary to... I think it's going to be him or Castle that goes at three, and we take the one that doesn't. I mean, I feel like those are the top two. I hope, I mean, I feel like those are the top two guys on the board that, you know, would most likely could fall to four. I don't see Saar or Richache falling that far. I feel like they're probably one and two from what we've seen across all the mock drafts. So I think whoever goes at three, whether that's Castle or Mata, say it's Castle goes three, I'm more than happy for the Spurs to take Matas at four. I think that's a fantastic draft if we did so. Because like I said before, if this kid rounds into form, he's got the frame that he's already putting a lot of muscle on it. If you see him from high school to where he is now, I mean, he went from a bean pole like Wimby at 6'10 <laughs> to now he's he's probably put on at least 15 to 20 pounds wow. of muscle. I mean, he's wow. he's much bigger dude than when he started in the G League. And I, you know, there's no reason to think that that's going to stop. I think he's got the frame that can continue to build muscle. So I think uh, him at four, it, it's a fantastic pick, a great value for the Spurs, mm -hmm. because this is a guy who in this draft could easily, he could go one. And I don't think in a few years, anyone would bat an eye at it with how, how he right. could pan out. And he's a Euro player. We know Pop and that staff. They love bringing in European players. Uh, he fits He's that. a European player, but he, I mean, he spent all four years well. here in high school. He played. Yeah. He's in the AU circuit. He's, he's, he's an American player from yeah. with a European name. Yeah. Well, uh, interesting though. I, I think if the Spurs do draft, whether at four or eight, you know, whatever that is, 
why do I feel this would be the steal of the draft? You know, that could be an early, you know, people on the com TV saying the Spurs got Buzelas at eight, whatever. My God, what a they got! They won the draft again. I, I can I feel mean, something like that happening. If we got him at eight, that would be downright absurd. I mean, he's yeah. he's a top five player, no doubt. And like we I've said, he could be one, and I wouldn't bat an eye at it. So if we if he fell all the way to eight, people out there aren't doing their homework because this no. guy he's a prototypical NBA player. He's what literally every team is chasing to be on their roster. A yeah. young 6'10 shooter yep. that can attack the basket and defend at the rim and the perimeter. I mean, he's exactly what you want. He's got the Jason Tatum prototype body. I mean, he yeah. probably will not, you know, traject into what Jason Tatum is, but he's got all the tools to do so. And that is a huge lottery ticket in the NBA. So it'd be shocking to see if he fell all the way to eight. I would be Reese. upset if we didn't take him at four <laughs> and he wasn't there because I, was I don't think he would go that far down. I was upset when the Spurs passed on Sangoon in that draft. I was like, what are you doing? Sangoon was on the board, Spurs, and you passed on him. Uh, but hopefully that doesn't repeat itself again this upcoming draft. He is Jack Thompson. Follow him on X at Jack underscore Thompson 33. Let him know your thoughts on his thoughts on Buscellus and if the Spurs should pass or select them in the upcoming draft. When we get back, uh, we're going to be discussing you guys, Locked On Spurs fan comments, a lot of draft questions for Jack. we got them lined up. That's next right here on Locked On Spurs. Hey, but first I want to talk to you about FanDuel. You want to go to FanDuel right now, get an account, download the app, whatever you got to do, get to FanDuel right now. Summertime means baseball and the NBA Finals and so much more. You can bet all on that and more over at FanDuel. Right now, new customers get themselves 200 bucks in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. Yeah, you heard that right. That's 200 bucks with any winning $5 bet in bonus bets, that is. And you can use that from everything, whether it's from the uh, finals MVP, who you think is going to be that, uh, who's going to hit one out of the park, you know, who wins the series, the NBA finals, so much more sure the Spurs are not in the NBA finals. But you got that connection with the Derek White to the Spurs of Boston. Maybe you're cheering for Boston or maybe you're cheering for the local the, the Texas team, Dallas. Whatever it is, you want to go to FanDuel, have some fun with it right now. 200 bucks in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. So you want to go there right now. Go to FanDuel.com slash locked on. Get a big win to your summer bucket list. I have it. You should get it too. Very easy, user-friendly, very intuitive. Make your selections pretty quick. FanDuel is the app to get. FanDuel, America's number one sports book. What up, Doc? This is Bugs Bunny, and you are listening to my best friend, Jeff Garcia, host of Lock on Sports. And we're back on Lock on Sports with Jack Thompson, formerly with San Antonio Sports Star. Follow my next at Jack underscore Thompson. Go there right now. Follow him. He'll answer all your draft questions, prospect questions, and so much more, including he'll, if you want to nerd out with him, he'll do that too with you. He'll have no problems doing that with you as well. Hey. Oh, but let me see what you got. Oh, I didn't see. I didn't see. Hey, hey, hey. Uh, look at that. That's not Hunter X Hunter, is it? Yeah, it is. It is, yeah. I I, I caught it. I caught it. Very nice. I approve, Jack. I approve. <laughs> All right. Let's go to get into some of your fan comments. A lot about the draft. Uh, we got Jack here, so let's uh, kind of pick two of those, get his thoughts on that. So the first one, Jack, is a reaction to our Dalton Connect Spotlight show we did last week. This is from Daylin Brown. Jack, he says, Dalton Connect reminds me of a slightly taller Luke Kennard, and he is already in the Spurs' back backyard, played at Tennessee. He's a southpaw, correct me if I'm wrong. So he likes if the Spurs were to get Dalton Connect. His comp is Luke Kennard. Well, what do you think about that? Is that kind of a not fair comparison? Do you think he could be has a higher ceiling than Kennard? What do you think? Yeah, I, I mean, the comparison, if you're, you know, white guy that can shoot, then, yeah, <laughs> he, he comps to Luke Kennard. Yeah, but. yeah terms of his play style no i don't i don't see that at all and no he is he is not a lefty he's right-handed but dalton connect uh i mean fantastic shooting comp perhaps because you know both the guys can shoot the leather off the ball but dalton connect is much more of a an iso scorer than luke Kennard is he can take people off the dribble i mean he's also he's six six Kennard six yeah. four uh, Dalton has a 40 inch vertical, so he'd be able to put anyone in the rim. I've never seen Luke Kennard dunk on a soul. So yeah. 
I I don't like the comp, but um, yeah, I mean, I'm still. If we went Matas and connect at eight, I mean, that's you. We yeah. won the draft. That's Six, phenomenal yeah. additions to the team. So yeah, big big fan of connect. Don't necessarily like the comp. I put them more towards um, a McDermott that can do a lot more, you mm-hmm. know, with the ball or someone with that sort of prowess. But yeah, I mean, I'm still all for connect to the Spurs. Yeah, yeah. There's there's a lot of Spurs fans that are really jumping on the connect a bandwagon especially after our show we did last week. Uh, he's already doing the rounds in the NBA. I think he recently did a workout with the Blazers. So wouldn't be surprised if he does them with the Spurs uh, because the Spurs do fall in that range where he could theoretically go to at the upcoming draft. Right, That was a great comment. Keep them coming. Our next comment is from Joey. All right, brace yourself, Jack. Could I we love be facing? You. Could we be facing another tank season? Let's see. What Joey says, the Spurs should tank again and hope they get a top six pick in 2025. Then we go all in. No one is worth trading for to uh, trading for to lose a top pick next year. So he's saying nobody wants to trade up a trap uh, pick next year. But what do you think about that? That way, thank you, Joey. What do you think about that? Uh, Spurs tanking, but for the goal of getting better position in 2025 draft. I mean, the theory behind it is sound. The 2025 draft is absolutely loaded with yeah. franchise point guards, future all-stars, premium role players, potentially all-NBA type guys, Cooper Flag, Ace Bailey, yeah. maybe a couple of those guards. I mean, it's an absolutely loaded class. And the theory behind that, absolutely sound, but it's it's a year too late. Mm. There's no way the Spurs are tanking three years in a row. That's no. just, especially with Wimby, it's almost going to be impossible to tank because Wimby's going to be so good. Yeah. Like it's just, it's not going to happen for one for Wimby. He doesn't want to tank. That's a known fact Two, yeah. Spurs fans. You know, the casuals that don't see the, <laughs> the shots fired the season. Shots fired. Yeah. I'm, I'm about <laughs> yeah, the casuals that don't look beyond the season ahead of them. That they're not going to want to tank again. That's just there will be an outright uproar if we tank again amongst all those people. And, you know, two, I don't agree that there's no one worth trading for using those picks. Trey Young, DeJounte Murray, Darius Garland, Lowry Markinen. I mean, those just those four off the top of our head. You add any one of those four, the Spurs right. are probably looking at the play in. I mean, it's mm-hmm. going to be that huge of a jump. So I don't think there's any way that the Spurs are tanking once again. It would it would be a yeah. disservice to Wimby. It would be a disservice to the fans. And it just with already securing Wimby, we don't need to tank again. You tank to get the guy like Wimby. Yeah. We've got the ultimate number one pick, possibly of all time, already on our roster. It's time to start building pieces around him that are bona fide NBA players and not prolong the process anymore with adding more and more and more and more teenagers to the squad that got to go through the learning curve, got to find their way in the league. You know, your position changes. It's there's a whole thing that comes with these young guys coming into the league that I don't think the Spurs have the patience for that after this season anymore. Yeah, yeah, they, they they can't afford another project player as far as selecting them a drafted stash. Those days mm-hmm. are gone. Hopefully, they'll come yeah. back again because that's a good sign that Spurs are winning. But uh, you, nevertheless, you know, I don't think they'll tank again. What is that? Five plus seasons already of missing the playoffs. Yeah, playoffs. there's just no way it will have an yeah. intentional tank again. Like yeah. if we outright just are garbage, then we're in the lottery. Fantastic, sure. we'll get one yeah. of those guys possibly. But I just don't see it. Yeah. And and again, you know, as we all heard, uh, when Wimby Wimby was uh, presenting the Rookie of the Year trophy in San Antonio, he said it again. He's all about winning. He wants to win. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't think twenty two win season, you know, measures up to that expectation for Wimby. And what Wimby wants, Wimby gets. He's the franchise guy. They're going to try to make him happy. So yeah, you could definitely expect them to really really look at, you know, how to shape this roster. Speaking of which, um. Danny Green was a guest on your former spot, uh, San Antonio Sports Star. 
he he i want to get your thoughts on that he projects the spurs would be out of the rebuild in as little as two more seasons what do you think yeah about that? i mean i wouldn't say necessarily out of the mm-hmm. whole rebuild process but in two years i mean if we're not fighting for a legitimate playoff seed mm-hmm. not one seed or two seed but if we're yeah. not five six you know four five six then brian wright you know he's for like he's failed the process yeah if with the generational talent that wimby is it's gonna be hard to mess it up because yeah. he's you just got to add pieces around him that are selfless and committed to the team and wimby the ultimate connector will take care of the rest so if we're not in two seasons fighting for a playoff spot, like a legit one, staying not playing like four, five, yeah. six. Well, six, yeah. And it's we've we have failed as an organization to get Wimby yeah. to where he needs to be. And but that Absolutely. doesn't end the rebuild. I don't think the rebuild no. ends till you're in the conference the, finals. Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. You're you, one you of the on. last four standing that has uh-huh. a shot to the championship. That's when the rebuild process ends because now you know you've got a team that is worthy of being in that championship series yeah that feels like that that is still some years away before the spurs get to that conference i mean look at look seasons four seasons away i mean look at okc you know they just barely cracked it you know Mm -hmm. recently so Mm -hmm. yeah it 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 takes a while by the way we had fun uh, a couple of days ago in locked on spurs uh you're under the gun okay you're under the gun you have to pick one only one who are you throwing the bag at if you're a Spurs GM? Darius Garland or Lori Marketing? Who would you pick? Darius Garland. I knew I, love, I, knew, yes. I absolutely love Lowry. He's yeah. a fantastic NBA player. And him next to Wimby would be yeah. fireworks. It would yeah. be impossible to guard for the opposing big yeah. men. But it does not solve the problem of the table Dang. setter yeah. or Wimby. Yeah. Look at yeah, I, all the teams in the playoff. Look at the two teams in the championship. Yeah. Derek White, Drew, uh, Drew Holiday, both all star caliber guards, table setters, man. Selfless table setters that will sacrifice mm-hmm. anything that they need to to help their team win. Luca Kyrie, probably yeah. the best backcourt in the NBA. I mean, two downright offensive yeah. juggernauts. Once in a lifetime players, those two. You've got to have high level guards if you're going to make it far in the playoffs. You it yeah. is an absolute must need. And I mean, while Lowry could get us to the playoffs, eventually you're gonna run into, you yeah. know, the Mavericks or someone who has that, OKC those with guards. Shea Gilgis. Yeah. yeah. You you need the all-star caliber guard to make it to the playoffs and to win a championship. And that's why I'm taking Darius Garland. He's we've seen him. We, he's been an all-star. He's a table center. He plays the pick and roll as well as anyone in the league. Elite passer, elite shooter as well. I mean, we see whenever you know Spida goes down, Darius Garland steps straight in to that oh, lead sure. dog role, and mm-hmm. he thrives in it. He he thrives in it. So yeah, I think Darius Garland for me to the Spurs would be a dream come true for Wimby. Yeah. For this fans, he's an electric player. He's fun to watch. And I just think it would be a match made in heaven. So it's yeah. outright Darius Garland without hesitation. Yeah, that, that was my pick when we did that game. I picked Garland just simply because you need somebody to be the four general. And sure, you got Laurie, you got Wimby, but who's going to give him the ball? Mm-hmm. Who's going to be your, your 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 leader on that court? Not to say Wimby or, Gar- uh, or Laurie couldn't do that, but... You got to have that quarterback. That quarterback is key. The point guard is key. So I went with uh, Darius as well. By the way, the guest was uh, Pledge. I know it was Pledge. Pledge. You knew. You mentioned he... Lowry Markin, and you got oh, you say that word, and yeah. whoever pledges in Pledge. the world, yeah. he, he's like, who said Lowry's name? Yeah. And That's guess it. who he picked? Yeah, yeah. Of course nobody... he picked Lowry. Yeah, he I, took he Lowry. Literally, he has been yeah. texting me about Lowry, so I immediately <laughs> knew it was him. He is Jack Thompson with San Antonio. Oh, sorry, formerly with San Antonio Sports Star. Make sure to follow him on X at Jack underscore Thompson 33. He'll likely be back very, very soon. Trying to get these player spotlights ahead of the NBA draft. 
So uh, I think we got a few more uh, in line. So stay tuned for that. Again, follow my next at Jack underscore Thompson 33. Make sure to follow Locked On Spurs wherever you get your favorite podcast. iTunes, Spotify, YouTube, Ken's 5 Plus apps. Go subscribe right now. You guys are doing a bang up job leaving comments. Keep them coming. We'll be back tomorrow with some more Spurs talk. So for Jack Thompson, I am Jeff Garcia. We're going to put a lock on this episode of Locked On Spurs.